In this video, we'll continue our work deploying the tier grouper image. We will be provisioning the grouper database and working with the Docker secrets and Docker configurations, where we'll store the grouper sensitive information as well as environmentally specific configurations. So in this session, we will populate the grouper database objects. We will add an administrative user, and then we'll set up our Docker secrets and configs. So the next thing we need to do is we need to populate our MariaDB. We're going to use this uh, command. It looks a little intimidating. Let's walk through it. We're going to run a Docker container, and we're actually going to execute one. We're going to uh, run this command against, um, if we look down here, we will see it's the GSH component, so the grouper shell. We're calling dash IT, which means that it's an interactive terminal. Uh, we're going to be able to type into it. It's going to kick back information to us. It's going to be just like essentially like we're SSHing um, uh, into the container. And uh, this dash dash RM is an indication to Docker that once this container exits out, throw it away, remove it. This is a one time command that we need in order to populate the database. A schema and add a bunch of starter um, record that uh, grouper uses internally so we need to get all that populated but once it's done we don't need that container around we don't care about the logs we don't care really about anything else the next two lines here we're mounting um, some information from our local host into the running docker container so walking through that, we're going to do a bind mount, and we're basically going to expand this dollar uh, open paren pwd. That's going to give us our present working directory at the time that this executes. Just a little shell trick, so I don't have to type in the, the fully qualified path. And I've got this directory of configs and secrets. And in that configs and secrets directory, which we'll go look at in just a moment, I've got a grouper hibernate properties file and we're going to mount that into the run secrets grouper underscore grouper dot hibernate dot properties. Now the, the startup script for a container actually knows to look for these run secrets files and looks for this uh, prepended string and it knows what to do with it. So if it sees grouper, it's going to drop that file into the appropriate location for whatever grouper components running to pick up that uh, that file. There's more information about this in the readme for the tier grouper image. We're going to do the same thing with the subject properties file. So one's our database connection string, which we already kind of looked at before, and the next one is our sources, our LDAP source. We need to know, um, you know, what users theoretically to to query against. The next thing here is we're going to uh, map in or connect this, you can kind of think of this container as a host. We're going to map this host into our internal software defined network that I previously defined. The last line here basically has three uh, specific components that we care about. This is our base image that we built. So nothing too exciting there. Um, this is always the uh, you know, potentially this actually could be your last uh, parameter in the command. If you have anything following the image, it's going to be the command that we're executing. So in this case, we're going to execute the, uh, the grouper shell. And then the rest of this are parameters that are going to be passed into uh, the grouper shell. So basically, this is just a grouper command basically saying for the database registry, we're going to check it, um, go ahead and execute the script, and don't prompt me about doing it. Just make it happen. The next command is almost identical, except we're going to just drop into the shell directly. And then I'm going to uh, run a couple of grouper shell commands. Uh, we're going to run the grouper session. We're going to uh, start one. And then I'm basically going to add myself um, into the sysadmin group. Otherwise, once we start the UI, uh, it's going to go, okay, I know who you are, Jake Asper, but you've got no privileges because you're not in the admin group and there's no way to you know, grant permissions otherwise. Um, and then finally, we'll just uh, type the quick command and get out of that, uh, that container. So let's go ahead and jump in real quickly into our configs and secrets directory. 
So you're going to notice we've got a handful of files. If you're familiar with Grouper, you probably recognize uh, three of these. Um, we've also got our uh, Shibboleth 2 XML. The Grouper UI uh, comes pre-configured with Shibboleth Service Provider all ready to use. All you have to do is provide it some information. Um, in this quick little demo, I'm not worrying about any uh, signing or encryption keys for the service provider. Uh, we do need to have uh, some certificates um, because we have Apache already set up and ready to run. So um, we'll see those used later when we spin up web services and we spin up UI. Um, but those files are there as well. And we do have our subject op properties. Uh, let's go ahead and let's dig into these uh, two that we're going to use. Um, should be no surprises. And if we look in the subject op properties, we're going to see that uh, same thing. We've got that stack name. It's kind of a namespace for our networked objects on our quote internal network. And, um, and then that service was called LDAP. So the fully qualified name is ants underscore LDAP. Uh, this is running on port 389. We've got our credentials and we've got basically a very simple um, pre-configured uh, source dot, uh, properties file all set up and ready to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and populate our database. Go ahead and highlight this because this would not be pretty watching me type it in. And there we go. We can see this is the grouper shell preamble and uh, showing our patch versions. And we've got a bunch of stuff spinning across the screen at us. And the script, it did pause for a moment, said it successfully ran. And it is creating a bunch of the database objects for us. Uh, you will notice if you're familiar with the grouper logs, things are a little different here in this log. The tier projects, uh, Docker projects, have gone through. And um, basically, we have a, a formatting uh, methodology that we're using for all of the logging. Um, Docker logging basically dumps everything out through uh, the standard out, which means we've got a bunch of different files from different sources all coming through. So basically this is just saying we've got the grouper API, that's what's executing. Uh, we're seeing the grouper event log being dumped. Um, we've got a couple of um, empty um, properties. Um, we have a an environment uh, property that you can set. So you can specify whether it's your dev system, your QA, your test uh, to help you parse your logs and, and know, you know where the various things are coming from, assuming you have um, some sort of uh, centralized logging uh, system. And then the final one uh, that's missing right now is you can there's a user specified token that you can throw out there and put in whatever property you want to. And then everything after this last semicolon is a standard messaging string that would come from uh, that log. So that all ended successfully. Uh, let's go ahead and run this next one. And this is going to start the grouper shell. And there we are. So I can now go ahead and type in here. And we can see that uh, in this case, the grouper logging isn't necessarily beneficial because we're interactive. Um, let's go ahead and grab these two lines. And we're going to run those two things. And that's basically what we were looking for. We just wanted true uh, to be returned. And then we'll go ahead and quit out of the shell. So the final thing we need to do before we start creating our actual services is we're going to use Docker uh, configs and secrets. Basically, they're very similar uh, concepts. So let's start with the configs. Configs are basically just files that are environmentally specific. So files that may be different from our different environments of dev, QA, production, test, all those different ones. Um, we can just load them up into the Swarm. Swarm will hang on to these uh, configs for us. And we mount those configs uh, when we start up a service. And uh, the container you know, is, is handed those environment specific uh, configuration files. Docker secrets are a little bit different. So they're the same basic concept. We're going to um, you know, basically take some files uh, that are going to be managed by Swarm. However, they're different in the fact that they are uh, encrypted at rest. The files are decrypted for the running container that is authorized to use that specific secret. 
The difference with secrets, as we saw up here, um, configs we can mount anywhere in the running uh, container. Secrets are always mounted in this run secrets uh, location. So that's one of the other differences. So all I'm gonna do now is drop into our um, configs and secrets folder, and we're just gonna go ahead and create these. And the command is pretty straightforward. Uh, Docker secret, we're gonna create the secret. Now this is gonna become a ward, if you will, of the swarm. Um, once this is uh, done, we technically can delete these files from our system. We don't need them anymore. Docker Swarm is managing uh, those files uh, internally for us. So this here is the uh, name of the secret, Grouper Hibernate Properties, and this is the file um, that is actually being uh, brought in as the secret. And same thing with the config. This is you know, essentially the alias, and this is the actual file. Uh, we could technically name these secrets anything we wanted to. When we map them, we want to make sure we map them to that specific convention that I mentioned uh, for the grouper uh, image. So let's copy this and run that. Perfect. No errors. We've got unique identifiers. Let's go ahead and just make sure that they are there. So secret ls. So we've got our three uh, secrets, and if we change this to config, we'll see we've got our two config files. And just to remind you, the host cert, it's a cert, public cert, it's nothing secret about that. We give it out to the whole world. And same thing with our shibboleth2.xml. In this case, we've got no secret data in it. If we had um, service provider keys that we had um, generated, uh, we would store perhaps the certificates as configs and the keys as secrets. But again, in this scenario, we're not worried about that. Okay, we are now ready to go ahead and start provisioning services, and we'll pick up with those in the next uh, video in this sequence.